do a labyrinth look. It actually needs to be combined with um, hoggle as well, so I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do that yet. I kind of have a plan in my head. I really need to plan anything better, but. I'm working with a couple reference photos of like different mazes, different shapes of mazes and stuff. And I'm gonna wing it. So if it sucks, you'll never see this video. If it turns out awesome, I'll cut this part out of it and pretend like I knew what I was doing. So, <laughs> story of my life. Make it till you make it. Start out using a black eyeshadow and a really fine brush and just kind of lightly put in a line of what I want to do. Kind of. Maybe I'll do white. I don't really know. Um, maybe I'll start with white and it'll be the path. I'll start with the path and then do the walls. Yeah, that's okay. No, I'm not naked. It's at a top down here. It just looks kind of naked. I just like to remember how to be nothing else. All right, I'm going in with a fine paintbrush and white body paint, and I'm painting in the path. It's my goal here, where you would be walking in the maze. So this is the part where you will follow and find the entrance and the exit. And I'm just kind of making this up as I go. Uh, I should have planned it, so it would be easier if you draw it, draw out your maze, and then paint it on yourself. That way, you know where you're going with it. And this part is probably the trickiest part of the entire paint. It takes the longest. And it looks messy. Right now it looks like some kind of dancing bird god or something. So yeah, this took forever. This was the longest part of the paint. I'm gonna go in after I get the whole thing done and I uh, thicken up the line. So I'm finishing up my last bits of path there. And then I'm going in with a smaller brush and I'm just thickening them and making them solid. So don't worry about them being perfect because we're going to go in with shading and black lines and fix them all up. Now I'm taking a dark brown eyeshadow and filling in all the spaces inside. And I'm using this, it's going to be shading to kind of give it some depth. I'm going to go back in with black after this. But for now, we're just taking kind of a fat eyeshadow brush and filling in the lines, going around all the outside, blending the edges of it. Now I'm going in with the black and shading the underside of all of the lines and on one side of them because in my brain this made the most sense to make it look uh, to give it depth so if you know a better way to give it depth then go for it if not you can just copy what I did here if you like it so on one side I went and put the shading the black shading on the left side of all the lines and underneath and put it right up to the white line. You can do your best not to color on top of the white, but I wound up messing it up a little bit. Now I'm going in with the black, a very, very fine brush and black body paint, and I am tracing all of my white lines. This is the reason why my lines are so insane. I'm, I'm holding this mirror here and I'm painting myself while looking like this. It's a very strange angle. <laughs> All right, here is what I've got so far. And because I don't completely hate it, I'm gonna continue and work on my face. Going in with the same fine black brush and black body paint, I am painting a staircase on my cheekbone. I'm going along where you would shade to make your cheekbone stand out and just working it all the way down. And you could probably measure it and make sure it's all even, but I just freehanded it.
Now I'm going in with a little eyeshadow brush and filling in with black eyeshadow right up to the line as close as I can get it trying to blend it into the line. Now I'm going with the dark brown eyeshadow and blending it out. I should have done this in reverse. I should have done the brown first and I figured that out too late. <laughs> So yeah, when you do it, go in with the brown first and then the black. I want to have to go back in with the black. Now I'm taking a white eyeshadow and putting it right up against the edge of the black without smearing out the black. Just like that. And blending it out. Just putting on a little primer on my eyes because I will be doing eyeshadow. Now I'm going to take the staircase up my forehead because it seems like a good idea. Using the same technique, only I did it right this time, I started with the dark brown eyeshadow and blended it real good toward my, toward my hairline, leaving a little bit of a light color back by the hairline. And then I went in with the, the black eyeshadow and filled it in right up to the staircase. Alright, now I'm going to go in with black eyeshadow and start mapping out what I'm going to do with the eye makeup on this side. And I'm putting a line across the top of my eye at an angle, comes down below the eye and up through the eyebrow. And I'm going in with white body paint on the inside of the black line for the top half. And then below the eye, I take it to the outside of the line. Blending, blending, blending. And it looks like a real hot mess for a while while I'm doing it, but it comes together okay in the end. Now I'm attempting uh, a winged liner that's going to go into a cut crease. I'm going in with a blue color from the electric palette, the Urban Decay electric palette, blah, 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 blah. and filling in parts of the eyeshadow that I want blue. And parts of the eye that I want. There you go. Um, what I love about the Maron body paints is that while they're wet, they they blend really nicely. They're kind of creamy, um, so I can smudge it out and blend it right into the skin. I'm going in here with the black body paint and going over my black shadow, filling it in, making it stand out more. I'm going in and attempting a cut crease. Um, be nice, I've never ever done one before. <laughs> so I was kind of winging it on this. I'm going along the top of the eye. In with some more of the blue shadow, the same color. Just trying to blend it. I'm going in from the corner of the eye by the, the bridge of the nose up into the eyebrow. I'm not completely covering the eyebrow, just starting at the center of the eyebrow and going in just a little bit. Now, I am definitely not uh, experienced with this kind of eye makeup, so I'm sure many of you out there have more experience with beauty makeup, and I have no in-between when it comes to beauty makeup. It's all or nothing. I wear maybe mascara on a daily basis, and then when I go in to do something, it's like full-on extreme beauty makeup. Now I'm going back to the top staircase and filling in with the white shadow and blending it out. For the rest of my face, I am going to be doing Hoggle. Can you see him? Here I'm just going in with some dark brown eyeshadow and starting to shade in a few places. I'm contouring my nose to look larger and filling in some areas where I'm going to have deep wrinkles. You can see I'm drawing out some wrinkles there. And Hoggle has very extreme wrinkles in his face. So it was very hard for me to get them to look the way I wanted. 
and next time I will probably do prosthetics to try and get something like that done. I'm going in with like a rusty red color to give some rosation in the face. It's got very funky colored skin. I'm just smudging it with my finger, I want it uneven. Now I'm using a brown uh, face, body paint and I'm going to start feeling, filling in feeling, I'm going to start feeling I'm going to start filling in the lines, all the wrinkles and I wrinkle up my face and find my natural wrinkles and creases in my face and there were way more than I was hoping for but you know, whatever I got character a lot of character in my forehead right there Oh, find those crow's feet. Oh, yeah. I think I need to get a cream for that. <laughs> the faces I am making. They're sexy. So, yeah, and this will depend on your face. So, you'll have to cater it to your face and your line and your character, we'll say. Now, I'm going to go in and bushy up my eyebrow. I'm trying to make it stick up. I don't have a lot of eyebrow. So um, I go in with red first, and I know that's awful red, but it's gonna get it's not gonna be that red when I'm finished, because I'm gonna layer it with a lot of colors. He has kind of a reddish brown color to his eyebrow. So now I'm going in with the orange on top of that. And just pulling out from the eyebrow, maybe even make a couple squiggles, like maybe there's some curly hairs in there. Now going back in with the dark brown again on top of those colors. There we go. Now you can see me. I kind of liked making my face look like this. It was really fun to play with. And I might go back again sometime and do a full face of like a wrinkly, old age, you know, old woman look. Filling in uh, the hollow of my cheek. Now I'm making the pink disappear on my lip. Well, in one side of my lip. I'm going in with some brown eyeshadow and shading up the top lip. He doesn't really have a lot of color in his lips. He has a lot of creases. So I looked for the natural lines in my lip and just pulled them out and darkened them up. Now I'm taking a stippling brush and very wet and using the dark brown paint. I'm dabbing it onto my face to add some texture, some dark marks, and then I press it into the skin with my finger, keeping it nice and messy and dirty. And you kind of build on this, you know, do a little, press it in, do a little more. Now I'm darkening up underneath the brow bone to make it look heavier and shading in and blending the eyebrow a little bit. There you go. Oh, I am pretty. So, um, I usually just paint my hair with body paint, but I happen to have the Maron uh, hair paint, white hair paint. So I thought I'd give it a try. It feels about the same, I think. Maybe it stays on a little better. And Hoggle just has some wispies that stick out over his ear, and I pinned back the rest of my hair, and then went in and just tried to paint my wispies. Like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see y'all in.